Right, Mike, let's see how these sound. First of all, take a bit of level on the pepper grinder. Here we go. How's this for level? Yeah, that's fine. OK, stand by and we'll record a few. I spoke to Sue on the phone again and told her one of my ideas. One idea was that uh, when, it, when it comes to cookery, there are certain things that you do in the kitchen which make a nice rhythmic sort of noise, like the uh, hammering of a steak or sharpening a knife, stirring, all these sorts of things. And I thought maybe this was an opportunity for recording sounds like that and incorporating them in, into the music in a sort of recipe, that sort of way. I've got three synthesizers in my room, apart from the Fairlight, and they do present one with a, an enormous range of sounds and possibilities. But uh, in this particular program, we're looking for an appealing tune, so I'm going to have to look for an appealing tone colour. Sometimes a tune will work perfectly well on one sound. You change the sound on the synthesizer, the tune doesn't work so well, the same tune. So it's a question of uh, finding compatibility between tone color and tune. Having got the tempo and the structure right, I always say that the tune comes last, really. A tune will always suggest itself. For the last three or four years, I would say 90% of my composing has been done using a computer system of one kind or another and programming the music into the computer as opposed to recording it onto a tape recorder. This has quite a few advantages. Firstly, any part of any track can be edited. You can make a change, let's say, in the bass line and immediately hear that that needs to make a change in, in one of the drums, which then implies that an instrument should come in at this point. That sort of a process you can't really do if you're working on tape because everything takes a lot longer to edit and to record and to drop in and drop out.
reason why we used real drums was that synthetic drums are rather apologetic in sound and for this sort of program you really do need the real thing and uh, it deserves the drama that you get out of real playing and also a very good acoustic which uh, you can only get in something like the orchestral studio at Maida Vale. Okay, we're going for a take. Coming up shortly. Once I got a, a 16 track tape full of musical ideas, then comes the mix down stage. Fairly late on in the uh, production, my producer Sue Lockett rang from Manchester and said, um, we, we think that uh, it would be a nice idea if you could actually play the tune on a tuba, because we think that it would be the sort of instrument that would reflect his personality. And uh, I had a bit of a heart attack about this because uh, I'd already carefully structured the tune around a sort of pizzicato and a flute tone colour. So I hummed and hawed down the phone a little bit, made one or two suggestions, and I did a couple of versions. One version which I just played the last few bars on the tube, and I thought that worked quite well, and that's the one they used. <laughs> Thank you. 